welcome all of you uh, to this uh, uh, Quran conference. Uh, my name is Muhammad Abdul Aleem. I will be the host for uh, this, uh, this event. Uh, this event is an extension of the yearly Quran conference, which is hosted by the Quran Center. Uh, uh, and it is part of the Yumna Quranic Education Trust based in Delhi. And uh, uh, I'll introduce the founder of uh, uh, the Quran Center and uh, Yamna Quranic Education Trust. We have with us uh, Dr. Muhammad Aslam Parvez. He holds a PhD in uh, plant uh, physiology. Uh, he is the former vice president of Maulana Azad National Urdu University in Hyderabad, India. Earlier, he was principal of Zakir Hussain Delhi College. Uh, he is science communicator, founder, uh, editor of Urdu Science, India's first and only popular science environment monthly magazine published in Urdu since uh, February 1994. He heads the Islamic Foundation for Science and Environment, a volunteer. Uh, he's a, a, a nonprofit and charitable organization. Uh, he works on the interface of Islam and science and environment. Uh, he, interprets, he interprets the Quran from a scientific perspective and promotes a holistic education. Uh, for this purpose, he has established the Quran Center in New Delhi. Uh, uh, this is an extremely important aspect of uh, how we should be understanding the Quran, and he has been a leader in this. Uh, he has published over six books and more than 350 articles. Uh, he has contributed uh, uh, He has contributed various chapters uh, which have been included in books and encyclopedias, and they have been published by various publishers, including Harvard University Press, uh, Continuum, Springer, LIT, well, uh, Verlag, and Sage Publishers. Uh, his latest book is Scientific Muslim, Understanding Islam in a New Light. Uh, and he delivers lectures at how he has delivered lectures at Harvard, Yale, University of Toronto, and many other institutions and organizations around the world. Uh, before I ask him uh, to, uh, uh, to take uh, the stage, I wanted to make sure that everyone knows about uh, the book that uh, he has published. And, and this is uh, uh, the book uh, that he has uh, published. It's, um, uh, it's called Scientific Muslim Understanding of Islam in the New Light. It's available on Amazon and various other online publishers. Uh, uh, and uh, I would highly encourage everyone to uh, uh, download this book, buy a copy of this book, and try and understand how this can help us become closer to uh, 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 the understanding of the Quran. Uh, so with that, I'd like to welcome uh, 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 Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Pervez. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum. My greeting of peace to all of you. I'm thankful to Brother Ali for joining heads with Quran Center Delhi and for giving me this opportunity to take this message to you all. Basically, the establishment of Quran Center is an outcome of my life experiences. Because uh, just like any Muslim average household when I was born, and when I reached to a stage where I understand things, I came to know that I am Muslim because I am born to Muslim parents. I'm in a Muslim household and I'm a Muslim and I have a Muslim name. I was introduced to Quran in the way that I can recognize the words, I could read it, but of course there was no aspect of understanding it. There was no training for understanding. Some surahs were memorized and I was taught how to offer prayers and then fasting and so on, nothing beyond it. So as I grew up, I just wanted to ask questions about many things which were not clear to me. And I was not getting satisfactory answers. So somehow 
there's a long story. I don't want to go into it. I started reading Quran because I thought that let's see that something which I have read in a way that I don't understand it, I must try to understand it. And I started reading translations. As I had some knowledge of Arabic, I could very soon realize that the translations at many places are not doing justice. So I returned to the original sources. And from that day onwards, a new journey started of discovery of Quran. Now, as I discovered Quran, I realized that what we are practicing as Islam is almost a minuscule of it. And many, many things got distorted to such an extent that I can safely say that they are exactly opposite to what the Quran asks us to do. Now, this had a profound effect not only on me, but my household also. And once I realized it, the second thing which occurred to me was that how can I start motivating people? motivating them to come to the Quran and understand it. And from this point of view, I thought that I should start a Quran center, a place where we can pick students and teach them Quran. Now to frankly speaking, if I would ask anybody, any parents to send their children, I want to explain them Quran. I was not expecting that many people will be sending their children because there are so many pressures of contemporary education systems, as we all know. So I thought that we should start a tuition center where we will provide education in science, maths, English, free of cost, with a condition that every student will be taught Quran daily with translations. So that we started in 2013. And we enroll students of ninth standard keep them with us for two years. And during those, these two years, they are taught the Quran with translation with all the basic concepts of Quran. Besides that, we started an annual gathering called Quran Conference. And it is started from 2011. That is before the Quran Center was established. This was a public meeting where we invited speakers who can speak on Quran. And we opted for those people who, are, who had no affiliation of any religious or political organization. We wanted to maintain a neutrality and till date we are maintaining it. The purpose was to motivate people to understand Quran. And just to tell them that if you are not understanding Quran, you are not following, the purpose is not served. And in fact, we cannot become Muslim unless until we understand Quran and we put it to practice. So that was in brief the reason of starting Quran conferences and for establishment of Quran Center. Now, because of these COVID conditions, Quran Center is non-functional since uh, February. And that's the reason why this year Quran conference in Delhi we held on the last Sunday that is 13 December and that was also on Zoom platform. And it was streamed live on the Facebook page of Quran Center. It was very well attended and that's why we're planning now that through our Facebook page and YouTube live streaming, we will be taking this message to people to motivate them to understand Quran. That's in brief it. Now I will introduce my brother Alim. Uh, brother Muhammad Abdul Alim is CEO of Human Assistance and Development International, abbreviated as HADI or Hadi, a very apt, in fact, abbreviation which has been working since 1991 to build bridges of understanding through humanitarian and educational projects. Hadi started the Islamic City project in 1995 to provide a non-sectarian, comprehensive, and holistic view of Islam and Muslims to a global audience. It receives over a million visitors every month. Alim has 30 years of experience in information technology, and extensive work experience in the aerospace industry and other Fortune 500 companies in the area of management information systems. He holds an MBA with a specialization in management information system from Southern Illinois University of Edwardsville. He will be sharing some of the Quran applications that Islam City has developed. Welcome, Brother Ali. Thank you, uh, Dr. Parvez. 
Uh, it is an honor uh, to be working with uh, the Quran Center and the work that you are doing. It's a common passion that we have. I'd like to thank Dr. Aslam uh, 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 Abdullah for bringing us together uh, uh, in, in, in this forum. And this is the blessings of COVID, we can also say that uh, yes, a lot of us are under stress and people are sick, but, and we pray for all of them. Uh, but uh, uh, as Allah says, inna mal yusri yusra, inna mal yusri yusra, you know, there is uh, uh, relief in, in all of the difficulties that Allah has provided and we need to find these reliefs and opportunities. Uh, and uh, inshallah, you know, hopefully we can connect better uh, with uh, our faith, our religion and with humanity uh, during this crisis. So um, I will uh, 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 just give you, uh, I am going to be uh, showing you uh, some part of Islamic city. Before I do that, uh, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview uh, of uh, what we'll be doing in this program. Uh, it is uh, uh, 9.17 right now, and it is close to 10.45 in New Delhi time. Uh, 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 I'll be showing the Quran tools. After that, Dr. Aslam uh, will be speaking about uh, how do we, uh, uh, how the, uh, essentially the Quran is, uh, how essential it is to have the Quran as a comprehensive understanding of the divine. And then after that, we have Brother Ayman Parvez. He is a student of the Quran, and I'm really looking forward to listening to him. It's much better to listen to students than to teachers, uh, I think, at times. So uh, he will be talking about uh, the laws of nature for success. And then after that, uh, we have uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad uh, Ahmadullah Siddiqui. Uh, he'll be speaking about ethical human, a universal uh, Quranic perspective. And then we'll come back to Dr. Aslam Parvez. Uh, he'll be talking about uh, his passion in terms of uh, how to be in sync with nature uh, uh, through the Quran. And then we'll conclude with dua. This is a brief uh, overview of our program. Uh, hope you all stay with us to the end. And uh, collectively, hopefully, we will be able to connect with the Quran and the message of the Quran and understand the Quran uh, uh, from a better perspective. A little bit about who we are. Uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Parvez was saying, uh, Hadi, it stands for Human Assistance and Development International. It's a nonprofit that we started back in 91. Uh, we are leveraging technology, sciences, and social sciences to enhance uh, knowledge and understanding for the betterment of society. And two of our keystone projects, Islamic City, we started in 95, and Classroad, Center for Languages, Arts, and Societies of the Silk Road, uh, we started in 2007. That's where we focus on different languages and culture. But here we're talking about Islamic City. Um, this is our team. We have a very dedicated team of people uh, all the way from Indonesia to the United States, of course. And uh, Dr. Aslam uh, Abdullah is our resident scholar over here. Just wanted to make sure that you see some of the faces uh, that are behind this, uh, this effort. Um, when we started Islamic City back in 1995, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this was a motivation for us. So if you look at this slide on the bottom, uh, a portion of the slide, these are mass communication technologies that, were that have been developed over the period of time. So the printing press was developed in 1438. The first Quran was printed on a printing press in 1874. There was a lag of over 430 years before we used the printing press technology to print the Quran. And same thing happened with radio. Uh, there was a lag of about 50 years before we started. Muslims started to use radio. And then television, there was a lag of about 40 years. The web came about with the development of the browser technology, and that was around 94. We registered Islam.org in 1995. Uh, so you can see that we've been shrinking this, uh, uh, the, the, the time where we've been using this mass media technologies, but we still need to do better than that. That was really our motivation on starting Islamic City. You know, and it is uh, one of the oldest and largest uh, community portals. Of course, there's a lot of information now on Islam, various websites and so on. But in terms of a community portal, a concept that is providing you a very comprehensive 
uh, our, our view of his farm. Uh, we are one of the oldest and largest that is out there. Uh, this is basically our mission. How can you make uh, people explore the non-sectarian view of Islam, connect people, and help them elevate themselves? Uh, 25 years in service, uh, uh, we have uh, 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 served 274 million people since uh, we started. We distribute free Qur'ans, so we've distributed about 35,000 free Qur'ans and 35 million views per year. That's the, the search, uh, that, the, the, those are the number of people that come. Now, the small window into Islamic city I'll be presenting to you today, I wanted to share two uh, uh, tools. And, uh, and this is our Quran tool. Uh, how can you search, listen, memorize, and do root word searches? These are the th uh, uh, four things I'll be sharing with you. And I'll also share with you briefly this new uh, AI-based uh, program that we are starting. It's called Alim, Artificial Language Intelligence, Intelligence Machine. And I'll show you how uh, that is uh, working also. So uh, with that, let me start my presentation here. So I'm gonna to go to Islamic City. And um, let me first start off with the Quran. So I'm gonna to go to the Quran section here. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, search. So there are uh, different ways you can search and some unique ways that you can search. Uh, we have first a phonetic search. There's one search box and you can search basically anything that you want to. So if I want to search uh, the uh, traveling uh, dua, SubhanAllah zi lana, I will type it in just the way I pronounce it. And I'm going to type it in Roman in transliteration and I'll do uh, a search on this. And it found four different occurrences, SubhanAllah zi Isra, SubhanAllah zi Qalaqa, uh, Subhanallah zee bi abdihi, and here it found Subhanallah zee sakhar lana haza wa kunna lahu mukhrameen. This is uh, Surah 43, Ayah 13. Uh, so you can search the Quran based on phonetic. Uh, this is a very powerful search uh, where uh, for non Arabic speakers and even for Arabic speakers, it makes it a very easy way to search the verses of the Quran that we're looking for. Uh, this year, uh, uh, we also launched a new uh, search and it's called the phrase search. So let's say, for example, I, um, uh, I know there's a verse in the Quran that talks about Allah is the Lord of the East and the West. And I'm just going to paraphrase this verse uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and search that. It, may not, it does not necessarily have to be the exact same verse, but let me make sure I have the the translation on also. So here it found the East and the West belong to Allah. Uh, uh, East and West belong to Allah. There are several verses there. If I wanted to show, uh, uh, let me see. This is a little bit more complex. Now, uh, I know there's an ayah in the Quran where Ibrahim salam, is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying that Allah show me proof. This is the incident where uh, Ibrahim salam was directed to uh, heal a bird and chop it up and then put it on different mountains. So I just remember that it was talking about Allah, uh, Ibrahim Salam asked, Allah show me proof. So I'm gonna search for this and here. Uh, and when Ibrahim, uh, Abraham said, my Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. So it has a very uh, deep and uh, 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 algorithm where it is trying to figure out what you're trying to search for and give back that search result. So uh, uh, this is a, uh, one of the two, these are the two most powerful search engines, uh, uh, searches that we have in this, in this tool. Um, of course, you can search by um, uh, uh, multiple ayahs. So if I wanted to, uh, uh, if you're doing a research on the Quran, and I wanted to search uh, uh, different ayahs in one way, in, in one shot, uh, Surah 2, 2, 225, Surah 5, Ayah 1 through 4, Surah 20, Ayah 10. I can just kind of plug in whichever ayahs I want and I'll kind of compile all of that and give it to you in, 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 in one screen. Uh, I can also, if I wanted to search for surahs, right? If I want to search for 
surah feel. And here again, I'm, I'm typing in feel uh, uh, incorrectly, but I'm just going to search for this. We found surah feel. So we're trying to make this into a, a search box where you can uh, search the Quran in any way that you want to. Yeah. The topic search that we have is one of the most comprehensive topic searches that you can find. You can find topics like evolution. Uh, 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 you can search for Maki surahs and, and so on. Uh, so you know, uh, there are different ways you can kind of you know, uh, look at the Quran by topic also. If you want to listen to the Quran, you can, uh, uh, you can go to the settings. I can listen to the Arabic. Uh, English translations, we have Pekthal, Muhammad Asad, and Talal Itani. These are the uh, audio English translations we have. In Arabic, we have uh, different reciters, Husri, Basit, Minshawi, and so on. Uh, and I can also memorize the Quran over here by, um, let's say, if I wanted to uh, Surah Allah, these are 19 verses. If, if I just say memorize uh, uh, and I can set, set, uh, set my settings, I want each ayah to be repeated three times, five times, or 10 times. And when I say memorize over here, <laughs> So I'll just uh, uh, recite that uh, uh, three times or five times, whatever you, you specify. And I can uh, select different translations based on the speed I, uh, I want to listen to also. So um, with that, uh, I will uh, share with you one other uh, 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 service that we have. And uh, I want to uh, just kind of as a, as a disclaimer, this is not, this is still uh, in a, uh, a test mode. We have not really uh, focused on uh, the, the, the UI or presenting it in the proper way, but uh, it's a root word search for, uh, for Quranic uh, Arabic. So for that, you can go to the Quran center from the main menu and select Arabic root word search. Now here, if I already know Arabic and I want to search for a certain word, and here uh, I'm gonna give you an example. I, I want to search darab, bal, bal, re, be. And it uh, assumes because I searched in Arabic, it gave me 58 results there where there are 58 verses that use the word darab. Now, if I don't know Arabic, uh, how can you use this, uh, uh, this, uh, this tool? Uh, I can go to Surah 4, and I want to search, and I want to really understand this, uh, this ayah, Surah 4, ayah 34. And it's saying over here now that Surah 4, ayah 34 has 40 words in it. And I can read word by word translation, Al-Rajalu, the men, Qawman, our protectors, Allah off, and so on. I can read the entire verse over here. And it gives me Hilali, Pekthal, Shakir, Yusuf Ali translations. And the, really the word uh, or the part of this ayah that I want to understand is this part where it says, uh, Hilali says, uh, beat them lightly. Uh, Pekthal says, scrooge them. Shakir says, beat them and, and, and so on. But I want to understand what is that word that is being translated over here? So as I'm going through the translation here, uh, I can go to uh, ill conduct, advise them, forsake them. And then it says finally strike them. I want to understand what is this word? So here I understand that it's coming from the root word darab. And I can go and click on referenced here. And it's showing me again, those 58 references, those surahs, uh, those verses where that word darab is shown. And here I can see surah 14, uh, verse 24, darab has been used and it's used in the context of sets forth. Darab here sets forth, he sets up and so on. Go forth, you travel. These are all of the derivatives now of the word darab. Now, uh, of course, I'm not a scholar of the Quran, neither do I know Arabic. 
but I can at least, you know, try and see, are there other uh, uh, interpretations of that word? Are there other meanings of that word? And I can sit down with Dr. Aslam and have a more meaningful conversation who's a scholar and he understands this much better than I do in terms of, you know, what is this word? Why is this translated in this way and so on? Now, the reason we're doing this is because uh, uh, as Allah says in the Quran, that if we were to turn the entire ocean into inks, it would not be enough to contain the words of God. So we are reading the words of God. And as we are developing more understanding of our environment, and we're getting more knowledge about different things. And for example, as uh, Dr. Pervez is uh, looking at the scientific aspects of the Quran, we're coming up with new words and, and new discoveries. Can we understand words in a different way? Can we have other meanings and other interpretations of those words uh, 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 and, and try and understand that uh, in, a, in, a, in a better perspective? So these are some of the Quran tools uh, that I wanted to share with you. Uh, and uh, of course, there's a lot, but I don't have enough time. So I want to uh, wrap this up. But before I uh, leave, I want to, to share with you this other uh, 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 initiative that we have, which is based on uh, um, uh, uh, an AI tool that we're using. Uh, and this AI tool, uh, we're working with uh, uh, some brothers the, uh, uh, in a company called Zill AI, and they're helping us uh, 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 with this, uh, ask uh, the Imam our question and answers. So over the last, 10 years or so, we have uh, accumulated over 10,000 questions and we have curated 10,000 questions. And how can we use this in a way where we can, uh, 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 where we people can ask simple uh, uh, language questions? So if I wanted to ask, is my wudu valid with nail polish? And a disclaimer, I don't use nail polish, but some of our sisters could ask that question. And I'm going to say, uh, uh, just kind of uh, type in that question. And uh, here, prayer while having nail polish, nail polish, ablution, and so on. So it can, it can actually uh, look for and understand that question. And based on the answers that we have, it will deliver that result for you. Or uh, I can say that, uh, 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 can I uh, use shoes made of pig skin, for example. So here are all of the different opinions based on you know, uh, uh, that, that, that question. So again, uh, this is another tool that we have. It's in beta right now. We have not released it. Hopefully within the next uh, week or so, we will be releasing this tool also. So these are the different ways we are trying to make sure we can uh, uh, use the, these technologies uh, uh, and make sure it can be a benefit to people. And uh, um, of course, uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this, where we have various education apps that we have developed. Uh, so for children, you can go to it uh, by, by going to islamic.org slash apps. And of course, these Quran tools that I just showed, we have an Islamicity app for iOS, uh, for Apple devices and Android devices. And we have a Quran uh, uh, a module in there and you'll have access to all of these tools that I showed you right there on your, on, on your phone also. So with that, uh, uh, that was the end of my uh, presentation.